Hello everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, my name is Hazel Craven and I'm a course advisor here at the University of Manchester and today I'm delighted to be joined by one of our current students on our analytical chemistry course, Jenny, and by Professor Jonathan Waltho as well. He's one of our professors in biophysics. Um, so in today's webinar we're going to be um, giving you a panel discussion today discussing more about the student experience um, here at the University of Manchester and Jenny is going to be um, sharing how she's found her studies um, and um, the skills that she's learned and how she's applying that um, in her current role. Um, and then we're going to go on and do a bit of a course overview, um, including a little bit more about the research project, which is um, the area of study that Jenny is just about to embark on. Um, and then going to give you a quick overview of the entry requirements for this programme and a little bit more about fees and funding. So today this is a live session and you do have the option to submit your questions through the question and answer function in Zoom. And we will be coming to those at the end of today's session. So please don't be shy. Please do submit those questions to us. Um, and um, we will come to those at the end of the session. They can be submitted throughout, though, as you think of them. You don't have to wait until the end of today's webinar for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to um, get our panel to introduce themselves to us. So um, I'll go first. Um, as I briefly said, my name's Hazel Craven um, and I'm a course advisor here at the University of Manchester. So that means that my role is to help support and advise and guide people such as yourselves who are considering the course um, right through from when you're first considering that course until you begin studying with us. And I can do that in a number of ways through email, um, through Zoom consultations, telephone consultations and through webinars such as today's session. Um, so at the end of today's webinar, I will put my contact details up on the, on the screen so that if you need to ask anything, um, you can get in touch with me afterwards. I'm now going to ask um, Jenny, would you be able to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hello, I'm Jenny Davis. So I'm taking part in the course. Um, I did my bachelor's at the University of Manchester and I started it 20 years ago. I did chemistry with physics. So since then, I've got over 15 years of experience with analytical analysis. So primarily in the environmental sector and I've moved into sort of fuels and energy now. Um, I specialise in mass spectrometry and mainly sort of gas chromatography. Um, so looking at sort of persistent organic pollutants and things like that um, and different matrices. That's brilliant. Thanks, Jenny. And um, John, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. So hi, I'm John Walsow. I'm Professor of Biophysics and I'm also a Director of the Biomolecular NMR Facility at the University of Manchester. Um, so my role in the course is twofold. So firstly, I teach on the magnetic resonance component, which is one of the modules that Hazel will talk about soon. And I also coordinate the um, project unit, which we're going to focus on a little bit later. And actually, in this particular case, I'm, I'm the project supervisor of Jenny. So that all ties us together. That's great. Thanks so much, John. So um, I'm going to start with the, um, the first question then. So Jenny, would you be able to tell us about your experience studying analytical chemistry and measurement science, please? So yeah, it's been really good. Um, I was like everybody a little bit unsure when I first started it, how it would pan out being 100% online and, and what I would be doing and how it would be set out. But I was really surprised it's, you know, broken down into lots of different types of things. So it's not just reading. You have lots of little lectures, your weeks planned out. Um, the lectures will be sort of 20 to 25 minutes. So they're nice and short and you can make notes. Um, there are questions and quizzes for you to do. Um, there'll be different pieces of work each um, week. It might be writing an essay or reading some literature. And then you watch videos, it might be a practical and you do stuff like that. You also have tutorials every other week and that's a really good time to catch up with people. You'll have a small tutor group 
Um, you might have problems that week with some of the work that you're doing and you'll go through examples. So that's a really nice sort of interactive time as well that you get on the course. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks so much, Jenny. Um, and I know you just mentioned there um, about the, the practicals and the practical skills. And that is something that we do get asked um, a lot by people who are thinking of studying an online course. Would you be able to sort of say about how you've found the course develops your practical skills and how those practicals work? Yeah, so the first the first section that you do right at the beginning really does go back to basics. It is, you know, how to use lab equipment correctly, even sort of right back to basics or how to use a pet correctly, which actually might sound really simple, but a lot of people in modern labs do it incorrectly. So it's good to know. And then also if you're a managerial side of things, it's really useful to know how to train people as well. Um, you look at titrations and gravimetric analysis. So the first section is really building your knowledge and making sure you have the skills to not only be able to deliver that for yourself, but to be able to train other people as well. Um, and then you have these practicals. You obviously can't go into the lab. So what happens is you'll watch a video of the practical. They'll go through all the stages. And while you're watching that video, you have to make notes just just sort of treat it as if you're the person carrying out the practical. You'll get all the information from watching the video and then you have to put all that information together, create a report, you know, have findings if you notice something went wrong, why it went wrong. So although you don't do the practical, you do get a real sense of being there. And I think because, well, everybody in the tutor group that I'm in has you know, we're all in work. So we're in the lab, you know, 100% of our daily life anyway. So there's an expectation there that you're in the lab and you sort of put the skills that you learn to use. Yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. Um, and, and John, just to kind of come to you, is there anything you wanted to sort of add at all about um, the way the course equips people with practical skills, perhaps relating to the module that you teach on? Well, I, I was just going to start with, um, because of COVID, of course, we've had to switch to this form of, well, we, last year we had to do all our practicals through this route. And actually, if you look at the outcome of that, then then the knowledge of the, this is mostly undergraduate, but some master's students on other courses, then their knowledge base of how to do practicals is really very strong, despite the fact that they weren't the one holding the piece of equipment at the time. So there is an awful lot in experimental science actually about knowing how to do things properly and as, as Jenny rightly pointed out and I think you do get a lot of that experience from from actually from the video you don't have to be the person who presses the button. Um, so from from the teaching side of things from the practicals um, so I teach on the magnetic resonance and the practical sides of that, um, a lot of that is to do with data interpretation. And so that is easily uh, handled in an online situation. So. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, so, Jenny, I'm just going to um, to change the, the subject just slightly here. So um, you mentioned that you, you'd had a gap from from study um, before you decided to come back and do your master's um, with us. Um, what was your motivations? What made you decide to do that? Um, yeah, so I, I started my um, degree, well, I did my degree uh, 20 years ago. So especially with analytical science, it's come on so much over the past 20 years. Um, this course really, really does home in on the sort of new technology that's out there. Um, you'll learn about routine and um, equipment that you might find in an analytical lab, but you also do a lot of research into brand new technologies. So it's really good um, to sort of have an understanding of the new things that are out there. I find once you go into sort of your, your work and your career and you start and you go out there you sort of you do learn things but you never have the time for that real intense sort of training you might go 
and have a day on site training somewhere or, or, or learn, you know, through reading things. But you never take the time to have this type of intense, in-depth understanding of things. So take the mass spectrometry or any module that you'll do, um, it's spread out over 10 weeks. And each week you're doing sort of 20 hours worth of learning. So that's 200 hours worth of learning just per module. So when you actually think about the amount of learning you do over the entire course, once you go into your career, you just never get that opportunity. So for me, you know, it was it was a real sort of no brainer to, to sort of for myself and my personal development to take on the course. Yeah, no, I think that's that's really important. And I, I'm sure that we're all guilty of it, no matter, no matter where you work, really. It is um, sometimes hard to find that time to kind of commit to, to your personal development. And in having a course, it kind of focuses that energy um, a bit more, doesn't it? Um, so um, am I right in thinking you started your course in, in February in a yeah, on a February intake. Was there a particular reason that you chose to start studying in February rather than September? Um, for me, no, it was just sort of the right time. I made the decision I was going to do it. Um, I was changing jobs, so I had a little bit more free time and I just thought it's kind of now or never. So it just worked for me. Um, and I think that's that's the great thing about the course. It is so flexible that you have those different start dates. You know, it might just work for you. Sometimes there can be a lot on in September. You know, I've, I've got a child myself. So sometimes it's, you know, start of term and things like that. And February just worked for me. I had a little bit more free time at that period in my life. Yeah, no, that makes, I mean, that makes perfect sense. And, and where you're saying about the flexibility um, as well, um, offering those those two options for the for the start date is, is one of the ways that we can be flexible with that and, and give students more option really um, with their studies. And um, so, I'm going to just change the subject back again a little bit now um, and start thinking about um, your research project. So you've, you're just about to embark on your research project, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so can you talk about the process you went through and how you decided on that project? Um, so the role that I'm in currently, I have um, a lot of communication with consultants and um, talking about problems that they have in industry. I, I work um, in sort of the marine industry, testing fuel, there'll be problems. So because I have a lot of that interaction, it was listening to um, problems and issues that people are having, maybe sort of a lack of development in different areas. And then just trying to think about with the equipment that I had at hand, what I could do to try and, you know, maybe solve some of those things and, and you know, investigate them at least a bit more. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense um, as well. And so you you arrived at your research project based on those problems that, that you were facing and that you were experiencing um, with work. And I guess one of the things which um, I know John's going to touch on a little bit more when we do discuss the research project in more detail. Um, it's there's a lot of different options for what you can study your research project in. So like you, people are able to to tailor it to their work, but that's not limited to one particular area of chemistry. And I know that John's going to talk about that in a bit more um, detail later. Um, but before we do that, um, John, are you able to discuss a little bit more about um, the role of the supervisor and how um, you support someone deciding on a project um, and during that project whilst uh, students are studying it? Yeah, so the, the overriding principle of the research project really is to try to come up with something that is going to be the most value to the student. And so rather than be very prescriptive in the kind of projects that we would offer, it's very much a dialogue uh, in terms of the subject area and, and trying to establish something that will satisfy both criteria of, of being very useful to, to the student and also having the appropriate academic rigor and uh, hypothesis testing. 
So the role of the supervisor, first of all, is to have those discussions with the students to see um, how you can define a clear results driven, hypothesis driven outcome to a project, given the, the interests of the student. And then subsequently, it's um, to, to guide in, in data analysis, to, to guide the overall direction of the project so that it does become a focused piece of work at the end that, that, an that answers a specific question. And Jenny said a very important thing, I think, earlier about one of the differences between academia and working in industry very often, although not universally true, but very often, is the amount of time that we have to devote to a problem. Because fundamentally, our role in this, or generally, is to, is to produce new knowledge by taking the appropriate time to answer a question. And you don't always have that time in an industrial setting. You have to come up with an answer or you have to move on. And so I think one of the very great strengths of the project part of the course is that it does give you that time and it enables you to develop your skills to answer a question in a very rigorous and, and as full a way as possible. And so we do try and encourage that during the, the whole process to, to make sure the focus here is on coming up with an answer that's very defendable and very robust, which you may not have time to do in our normal circumstances. You know, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, John. Um, and that's really, really um, interesting as well. So I guess one of the things, um, just building on really what you were saying there, um, John, with, with taking that time and how it is a, it is a big time commitment to, to come up with the hypothesis, to, to make sure that you've got a robust answer to, to the questions you're posing in your project. Because um, Jenny, as you've mentioned, you're working full time as well. So how are you planning to, um, to manage with the um, the research project and your full time work, it, it can be difficult. It can be difficult. You know, it's a whole course. You take on that commitment to do it. Um, I think having my supervisor really helps because I have a check in with him every other week, and we break it down into small sections. So rather than me thinking and being sort of a bit overwhelmed by the whole project, we break it down into little chunks. So every other week, I'll just be focused on what I'm doing for that little piece. And that actually really helps. Um, also, it's just having that communication, um, knowing when, when you can and when you're really pushed to it. And, you know, this week I might be doing a little bit less, but next week. So it's just sort of um, having that communication with your supervisor as well. Um, it's tough, but um, it... it Breaking it down helps, um, and I, I think it, it just gets done. I think having a check-in personally helps me because it keeps me motivated to do to do my work and, and make sure that um, that it will all get done in in the right amount of time. I think if you are really struggling. Um, the course, how it is, as long as you open with that communication, they're very flexible with you. And same with your work as well. I think most places um, have an understanding that, you know, the qualification is as much benefit for you as it is for them because you're gaining those skills as well. So um, I think you, you just do it. It's hard, but it's always worth it in the end. Yeah, I think that's um, that's a really nice point there you made and and really kind of honing in on how how you're meeting regularly um, with John during during your project um, and that breaking that down as well. So the idea of a research project may initially at the start seem kind of quite daunting, but it, it doesn't have to be and it is possible to to break that down with the help and support of your supervisor um, and. Do you have those kind of conversations with your um, employer as well to see if there's anything that they can do to support your research project? Yes, definitely. I think it's been a really co busy couple of weeks here um, and I've definitely had those conversations. And I think one of, one of the nice things as well is that you, you'll be in a tutor group. Um, I'm in a tutor group. And I think at first when we were all together, 
you know, we, it, it was all quite nervous and we didn't really communicate that much outside the tutorials. But I think definitely what I would say um, and my advice for anyone taking the course is to really put the effort in with your tutor group because sometimes like this when, you know, the project is quite tight and I think everybody feels the same. It's really nice. Um, you know, there's been a few emails back and forth that people might be struggling with timelines, but actually it's nice that knowing everybody in the same boat and hearing that advice off other people and what they might be doing. So I would definitely say with regards to your tutor group, the more you put into that, the more you'll get back because it's really nice knowing that everyone's in the same boat. And even though it's virtually and um, you'll be meeting them with them on Teams or by messages, I think it definitely helps to have that knowing that, you know, you're not on your own and there are other people working on the same thing um, in just a different place. Yeah, no, that's that's a really, really good point as well. Um, and it is something that we, we do really say with our online courses. It doesn't mean you're studying alone at all um, when you're studying online. Um, you know, you have access to, to the people on the course with you. You'll be in tutor groups with them. You'll you'll have sessions with them. You'll have the opportunity to make contact with them. It might be that they work in um, a slightly different industry to yourself, but it doesn't mean that those um, challenges aren't similar in any way, shape or form. But also, um, as you kind of been saying, you know, you, you speak with John regularly um, about your, your project. That's the same in the taught modules um, as well. You have access to your, your lecturers through um, virtual environment. Um, and by email and you have access to the same things as the students who are who are studying the course even um, on campus courses um, as well. Um, John before we move on um, to talk about kind of the the course and give a bit of an overview on that is there anything you wanted to add about the research project at all? Um, <clears throat> I think I've really covered most of the things. Um, I suppose the other aspect I haven't really covered is is the the discipline of writing uh, long projects. It is a skill and it's an easily learned skill but it's not one that a lot of people have at the start and so a big part of the role of the academic supervisor here is just to guide uh, the student into being able to cope essentially with detailed report writing and how to break things down and how to um, not make it the very large stressful effort that, that otherwise it can be. So I think that that is a very strong transferable skill that you get from the research project. Yeah, no, and it is also such a such an important um, important one to highlight as well. I would say um, such an important skill to highlight when you when you're studying that you, you need to to be able to do that. But also pointing out that you're you're not on your own um, in any way. Um, if you are struggling, there is that support available. Um, and is there, um, if you ask and if you have those, those conversations with, with either academics such as yourself, John, or with your peers as well. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen now um, and give a little bit more of an overview about the course. So there are multiple study options um, for the Analytical Chemistry and Measurement Science programme. Um, like Jenny, um, you may choose to opt for studying the full um, MSc, the full Masters, um, but there are also several shorter options as well to give you a little bit more flexibility. Um, so one of those is a postgraduate diploma, and that's worth 120 credits. Essentially, that covers the um, support units without doing a research project at the end. Um, and we also have a shorter postgraduate certificate or continuing professional development. Um, which the continuing professional development is um, individual units um, and those units are those 20 credit units that build up to um, create the full qualification. So as we've mentioned about this course, it, there is um, all the taught units are 100% online. So you can study 100% online for this course. There's no requirement for you to come to Manchester. Um, and those units, as I've just mentioned, are taught as 20 credit units and they're taught in the 10 week blocks, just as um, Jenny was saying earlier in today's session. So 
one of the great things about this course, and I know that we've, we've drawn on it already today, so I won't focus on this too much, is that it is flexible learning. And that gives you the option to study when it suits you and to tailor your learning around your work and your other commitments. Um, for example, um, when you've got this flexible learning approach, it's not necessarily just around your work or the, your other commitments. It also means that it enables you to study from any time zone, so whereas if you were studying an on-campus programme, you might be required to be in Manchester for a lecture at 10 a.m. Um, on a Tuesday morning, that doesn't necessarily apply um, with those flexible learning and with those study options. So a little bit more about the course units. So during each unit, as you kind of heard from, from John already, you will be learning from leading academics who have a wealth of experience in analytical chemistry and the measurement sciences. So these are people who are researching in these areas and coming up with these, these groundbreaking um, theories, answering real life and solving those real life problems too. Um, and that really gives you the option to um, speak to them and to find out more about their areas of research, but also start thinking and thinking about how that can apply to your day to day um, work and to your own personal interests. So you will, um, when you study these online modules with us, um, be learning through our virtual learning environment and um, we'll and so that would mean that your materials are released through that, your course materials for each unit. And you have the opportunity to study those through that and the opportunity as well to um, go back and to watch things back as well. And I know that's something that um, we've been we've been talking about a lot today um, and something we were talking about just before the webinar started as well, about how valuable that can be to be able to go back and rewatch those materials as well, giving you that flexibility um, to learn at your own pace. On this course, you will have a mixture of mandatory modules to build up your core knowledge, and then you will also have the option to choose um, additional modules that are relevant to you and your interests, um, perhaps relating to the area that you're currently working in, or perhaps also relating to um, areas outside of um, your, your field of work or your field of um, experience to date that you just want to learn a little bit more about as well. And that really gives you the opportunity to get that broad understanding um, of analytical chemistry, um, but also it gives you the opportunity to specialise and hone in on the areas that are most of interest to you. Um, another thing to um, point out about learning online really is that any live sessions are recorded as well so that you can catch up on that and watch it back if you cannot attend anything that has been run as a live session. Again, giving you that flexibility and allowing you to pick that up from no matter where you are in the world. Similarly, that means that you can also go back and review it at a later date should you need to. You've got um, the individual course units. Um, each unit name is highlighted in the left hand column and you have the fundamentals of analytical science. You usually study this module first and that's mandatory across the master's postgraduate diploma and postgraduate certificate. After that, depending on the level that you're studying at, will depend how many of these modules um, remain mandatory or how many are optional so that you build those up to your own interests. So you can see that we cover areas such as separation science, mass spectrometry and atomic and molecular spectroscopy as well. Um, and those, are, um, those form your mandatory units for the MSc and the postgraduate diploma. You then um, have the option to diversify your studies and build on those interests with the units such as magnetic resonance, X-ray techniques and chemometrics. And if you're studying the full masters, then you will also have the um, research project, which is what we've been discussing in a lot more detail today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to John and ask him to talk a little bit more about the research project. Thanks, Hazel. Um, as I said before, one of the philosophies of the research project is to try to um, come up with a project that suits the development of the, the student. And 
because of that, we do offer as broad a range as, as possible. In fact, we're open to all sorts of analytical methods um, being brought into the program according to what is um, what the desires of the individual students are. But when we look at what's occurred so far, then typically it does break down into the areas that are actually mostly focused on in the taught units. So we do have a lot of people who are really focusing on chromatographic methods, so either gas or uh, liquid chromatography methods. There's a lot of interest in mass spectrometry analysis. There's also a lot of interest in elemental analysis, either through absorption spectroscopy or through emission or, or mass spectrometry analysis of elements. And then other people are much more interested in the molecular side. And so we have a full range of molecular spectroscopies as well as uh, magnetic resonance on X-ray means of, of probing those systems. So as you can see, this covers a very broad range of analytical methods. And as I said earlier, we're also open to um, exploring other methods that are um, related to these, either similarly or distantly. So we are very open to whatever approach really suits. And quite often the projects involve a combination of these different approaches. Hazel, hey, so can I just ask you? Change, yeah, thanks. So most people, when they approach the project, they take this option and that is where you work in the, in the laboratories of your current employer. And the advantage this gives you is, of course, you are working very much with the equipment that, that you will be working uh, as you um, finish your degree, and you're working on problems that are very much related to your, your, uh, your company's interests. And so we do try and tailor it to whatever uh, project area that you want and the expertise that you want to gain. And I've talked before about the role of the academic supervisor in helping, and, and Jenny has as well, in sort of helping to come up with something that has the academic rigor and approach and the ability to come up with uh, formal reports. But there are two other options that are available. Um, so a lot of analytical approaches actually involve data analysis, as I was talking about earlier and these are primarily computational. And so if you don't have access to laboratory uh, capabilities in your workplace, then there are two other options which you can use to carry out your project. So one of these is to move towards the computational side, so the data analysis side, and those you, projects you can carry out, again, under guidance of uh, an academic supervisor at the University of Manchester, and they will, they will be very much involved in the direction and the design of the project and the, there's a little more interaction with the supervisor and for instance or, or more um, frequent interactions than um, in the option one circumstance. Um, so there is because there are, there are calls on University of Manchester facilities then there is a small additional fee associated with this as Hayes will talk about at the end. The other option is actually to come to the University of Manchester and work here using our laboratories. So again, you would have an, a supervisor who would be uh, working with you in the same way that we work with our other master's students who are based on campus. And um, here then you would be able, you would have access to all of our facilities, depending upon which particular research project you're interested in. And you would just work as a standard member of our research groups along with our other PhD students, postdocs, and master students. And again, the, there are uh, certain costs that are associated with this, and so there is a, a fee implication for this as well. So I think that's all the specific slides on the project, Hazel, so I'll pass back to you. That's brilliant. Thanks, John. And thank you for that overview as well of the um, course, which I'm sure that um, the overview of the different types of projects, which I'm sure that people will find really interesting. I know that the project is a topic that um, when I speak to a lot of people, they're really interested in finding out how that works and what the different options mean for them. So at this point, um, you may be wondering what the entry requirements are for this programme. So 
For this course, we require a first or second class honours degree or the overseas equivalent in chemistry or another course with a major analytical or analysis chemistry component. So, but one of the things that we are looking at with this programme and that we are really happy to consider alongside that is significant industrial and or research experience. Because we know that there are occasions where you will build up that necessary knowledge that you may not have studied initially in an undergraduate degree that would sufficiently prepare you to study this programme. So it doesn't necessarily mean that if you don't have this qualification, you won't be accepted onto the course. And if you do have, um, if you do feel like that situation um, affects you, then you will be able to get in touch with me um, and we can discuss that further because um, it's something that can be looked at at the discretion of our course director. And you can see at the bottom of this slide here, my email address is studyonline at manchester.ac.uk. So please do get in touch if you think that you fall into that category and you've got additional questions and want to discuss your eligibility for the course. The other thing that we ask for is that if English isn't your first language, you may also need to demonstrate English language proficiency equivalent to 6.5 overall with a minimum of 6.5 in writing and 6 in all other subjects in the IELTS academic. We do have a number of options um, available to you if you don't have the IELTS score already. And we do have a number of additional qualifications that we do accept instead. So again, if you're not sure whether you meet that, then please do get in touch and please do ask. We'll look at any way to support you that we possibly can um, to get you onto this course. Um, so please, um, please don't be afraid to ask and please don't be worried about checking your eligibility for this programme before you apply. That's one of the things I'm here to do and here to help and support with. So when you decide to submit an application, you'll need to complete um, the application form using our new application portal. And alongside that, you're going to need to provide a number of supporting documents. So you'll need to provide your degree transcript and your degree certificate. Those will need to be translated into English if they're not already. Um, and as well as that, we'll need you to provide the contact details for at least one professional or academic reference and a CV detailing your professional experience. And really, this is a great place to highlight those analytical chemistry or those measurement science based skills that you're using um, on a regular basis that show why you're such a good fit for this programme and show that you're going to be able to come in and understand and succeed at the course. And the other thing we need from you when you're applying for this course is a 500 word personal statement. Again, explaining a little bit more about why you want to study the course and why you think that this will um, help and support you in your future um, career. Um, this isn't designed to be daunting um, at all, but if you do have any questions about any of these supporting documentation or anything on this slide, then I would really encourage you to get in touch with me. We are shortly going to be um, opening up for questions and answers. So if there is anything that you wish to ask today, then please do make sure you submit those through the question and answer function on Zoom. Um, but um, before we go on to that, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about the fees and funding for this course. So the fees listed on the slide are for February 2022 entry. And one thing I do want to highlight as well is that we do have the opportunity for you to pay by instalments and spread the cost of your fees throughout your studies. Um, so for each course type, it does have a varying fee amount. And for the masters, that's £12,000. The postgraduate diploma, £8,000. The postgraduate certificate, £4,000. And if you were studying one of the individual 20 credit units for continuing professional development, that's £1,330. Um, in addition to that, something which John has touched on briefly, um, just as he was introducing the research project, depending on the option that you select, there may be additional fees attached to that as well. So a research project with your current employer, where you're working with a University of Manchester academic um, alongside that, there's no extra cost for that. But the computational or theoretical projects and the project based at the University of Manchester do have additional fees of £1,000 or £3,000 respectively. Um, and the 
Um, I, the reason for that is because you're just engaging with the university a little bit more. You, you're using the facilities um, a bit more here, um, as opposed to using those facilities based um, with your employer. So the other thing that I'm, I'm really happy actually today to be able to announce to, to everyone as well is that we've been able to extend our early application discount for the February 2022 entry, which gives you a little bit longer to get your paperwork and those supporting documentation that you need together and ready to apply. So when you submit a full application by the 7th of January 2022 for a course starting in um, February 2022, you can receive up to 10% off of your tuition fees. And we really do encourage you to, to take a look at that because it's a really um, fantastic opportunity um, to make the course um, more affordable to you as well. And as I said before, you would still have the opportunity to pay by instalments as well and spread the cost of your studies um, throughout. So we're now going to open up to any questions. So please do submit anything um, as you think of it. So I can see here we do have one question um, already that's come through, which is, would this programme be suitable for recent chemistry graduates? I, I, I can answer that. Um, I think personally it would be really good. So part of my job is um, hiring people as well. And when you hire people, you know, it's always good to see that they've got lab experience and qualifications and sort of this degree enables you to not only be working in a lab and having the sort of day to day, you know, nine to five, get up in the morning, showing commitment to holding down a full time job and also additionally gaining a qualification at the same time. So it really shows that the person would have, you know, a lot of commitment and be really interested in the topic as well. So I think it would kind of appeal to anyone, you know, if you were young or older like me <laughs> and wanting to just gain experience in new technologies, I think it would appeal to everybody. I also personally find it, um, better learning when you're actually in a work environment because the things that you're learning online then you can also apply them to whatever you're doing in your everyday job so I think it does help it helps you remember things if you're learning about say an ICP or an FDIR and you have the advantage of having one in the lab that you're working you can apply it to it and ask questions and I think it does help if you doing both at once. That's brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. John, is there anything you wanted to add at all? I was just going to say from our perspective, it, it is the equivalent of any other master's degree. Yes. And so there's absolutely no reason to uh, not to do it as a new graduate. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess one thing again to, to highlight, I guess, with this as well is the now with the flexible options of that research project too that you don't already have to be working in industry when you start the course you have the additional options for that research project to tailor it around your interest and perhaps around to an area of your career that you want to um, go into in the future as well so um I mean, I would encourage you if, you if you're a recent chemistry graduate to definitely look at this course. And if you do have any questions, um, then please do let me know um, and I'll be more than happy to help. And I'll bring up my contact details in just a second as well so that you, you can get in touch and ask anything more that you need to. Um, um, so I think that's the end of the, the live questions. Oh, no. Sorry, we've got another question just come in. Um, so how long does the research project um, take? Um, would you be able to um, explain that a little bit more, John? Uh, yes, so um, we can do it in three different ways, essentially. And it depends upon what other work commitments you have. So the, the standard way is to cover three of our 10 week blocks. So it would be a 30 week project. Um, you can, if you can commit more time to it, you can do it in 20 weeks, which would be um, obviously uh, saves you significant because of the time, because of the break periods. Um, and if you do do it full time, then you can do it in 15. So those three options are all available to you. 
That's brilliant. Thank you, John. Um, and we've had another question um, submitted as well through the um, question and answer um, saying, are the fees listed on this course for one year or for the whole program? So I can confirm that's for the whole course, not just for one year of study. OK, and that looks like um, we're coming to the end of our questions now. So um, I've just got one more question that I wanted to ask um, both of you, Jenny and John, before we wrap up for today, um, which is um, what advice would you give to someone considering studying analytical chemistry and measurement science? Um, and John, if we can start with you on that one, please. Well, I would say that um, a lot of employment in chemistry is in the analytical sector. And I think it's one of those areas that is relatively underrepresented in undergraduate courses. And so I think the strength of doing this is essentially to get your skills in those areas from, from the rudimentary information that you'd had as an undergraduate to, uh, to a, a very leading edge professional level. Brilliant. And Jenny, over to you as well. Um, what would your advice be to someone considering studying the course? Yeah, I would say go for it. I'd say it appeals to, you know, whatever age you are. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've learned so much. And, and, and like Jonathan said, learning, you know, brand new technologies from experts in their field. So they make it really interesting as well. And they always try and make you apply it to what you're doing in your work environment or try and apply it to things that interest you as well to make it more interesting. Um, ad advice to others, I'd say make the most of your tutor group, really try and get as much interaction with them because it definitely does help. It helps when you've got somebody there to ask questions, you know, if you're going through some work late at night and you want to bounce some ideas off somebody. So really make the most of it while you're doing the course and, uh, and just enjoy it. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, so that really ends today's um, webinar. So if you've got any further questions or you want to discuss this course in any more detail, then you can get in touch with me um, using the contact details that are on the screen, either by email studyonline at manchester.ac.uk or by phone, either by telephone or using WhatsApp. And my phone number is on the screen there as well. So just want to take the um, take the time now just really to say thank you to everyone for attending and or if you're watching this um, back as well thank you for watching this back um, and please do let us know how you found today's webinar so for those of you watching live um, there's going to be an anonymous survey that pops up when the webinar closes um, and so um, please do complete that let us know how you found today's session and let us know any um, topics or areas that you would like us to cover in our future webinars um, and if you are watching this um, webinar back as well, then um, there will be a link to a survey available to you as well in the description of the video. But thank you very much to um, my panel today, to Jenny and to John, for taking the time out of your busy working days um, to take part in today's session. Um, and I, I hope that everyone watching has found this um, as, as interesting as, as I have today, really.